The straighter you're able to queue in snooker, the more simplistic the game becomes. So what are the basic things that anybody can do to help their queuing technique, as well as exercises you can use to continuously improve your queuing? This is Break From Life. Welcome back and if it's your first time watching one of our videos then it's fantastic to have you here. The majority of players playing snooker will have noticed that their game reaches a certain standard and no matter how much practice they do it stops improving anymore. Your goal should be to improve every time you practice but how can you do this? Well to start off with you need a cue action that works consistently. So this video is going to be all about getting you a bigger spoon. Hang on wait I haven't explained that yet. Oh, that's going to sound weird without context. Uh... Think of this a lot like a race, an egg and spoon race to be precise. You see, there's no reason that someone with spoon A couldn't beat somebody with spoon B, but their balance is going to have to be a lot better. This is why if you've got a cue action that's more accurate and consistent, then you're coming to the game with a massive advantage, which will allow you to play more shots and develop other areas of your game quicker. So this video is going to be all about getting you a bigger spoon. Probably the main reason why a player's ability plateaus is they become concerned about how their cue action is working on the shot. But why is this such an issue? Well the main reason is you lose a lot of focus on what's actually going on in front of you. And it's really not a good idea to work out what your body's doing via feel, especially when there's alternative solutions to this. You see, the best thing you can do is work out exactly where your cue arm finishes when you've completed a shot. You'll start to find you gradually improve if you find a position that feels right and consistently practice delivering a cue into this position. But of course, when you're playing any sort of game, you want to be doing this naturally already. And during a frame of snooker with anyone, there's only two things you really want to be concerned about. How you're lining the shot up and staying down on the shot. Because in these situations, what you're really striving for is control, and these are really the only two things you have almost full control over. Snooker's complicated enough without you having to worry about every small detail of your technique. There'll be times when you simply won't have the capacity to do that. But of course, right now we do have time to say hello to Debo from Poznan, Poland. So what can you do if you've got bad queuing? And what do we mean by bad queuing? Well, normally it's one of three things to be truthful. You can't find the center of the cue ball, you're not able to deliver the cue in a straight line, or you can't produce as much spin on the cue ball as you'd like to. But don't worry, I have solutions for all of these problems and exercises you can practice to help you get it right in the future. Starting with how to find the centre of the cue ball, because if I take the grid reference away, it's not 100% obvious where it is. Even if you're just the width of a tip out from the centre, this can cause you to play a shot with unwanted side spin. You see, if you're playing the cue ball with any side spin, then it will no longer run straight. And this can make it almost impossible for you to play consistently. But what can you do about this? Playing the cue ball in a straight line is far easier than playing it to curve, especially when the amount of power you play it with has a dramatic effect on the path of the cue ball. And I think this is by far the best way to check that your eyes aren't playing tricks on you and you're able to recognize the center of the cue ball. Just look all the way down the spots and just simply place a block of chalk in line with all of them. Place the white near the brown spot and aim for the chalk. From here it's very simple. If you find the cue ball jumps off the cushion to the right, then you're playing the shot with right hand side. Or if it jumps off to your left, then you're playing it with left hand side. You can keep simply doing this until you find the centre of the cue ball and get accustomed to playing the shot through the centre every single time. Ayakarana is in New Delhi, India. 
Delivering the cue straight with a good cue action is a massive subject. And I hope by now everybody's heard about the bulk line test where you can just see how straight you're cueing visually over a straight line. But there's a lot more to it than this. For example, just because you're cueing up to the line straight, does this necessarily mean you're going to approach a shot in a straight line? So just to be safe, let's run you through the shot preparation that's so important, I permanently stuck it to the wall. Starting with choose your target. Just having an idea of where you're going to strike the object ball. Walk in on line. Imagine a line going from the target straight back through the cue ball and walk in from this direction. Accurate foot placement. Imagine the line goes back across the floor and find a consistent place to stand over it. Check your aim. When you're down on the shot, make sure everything looks exactly the same as it did when you were back from the table. Pre-shot ritual. Complete a simple routine that you use on every single shot. This can really help with your consistency and cue power, but we'll discuss it more in a minute. Complete the shot. Make sure you've stayed down on it and your cue arm is finished in its regular position. Verify your result. Try and work out exactly where the white goes. This can be very difficult, but can really help you predict future shots. And if you put them all together, it can really help you deliver the cue straight. We touched there on how to aim in snooker. And if you want to know more about this, then try our video, Snooker Aiming Technique versus 8 Ball Pool. It's on the Break From Life channel page, along with a load of other videos that'll help you dominate at the game and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel. So what ideally does your cue action need to be doing to deliver the cue straight? Well as you can see here, at the moment the cue touches the cue ball, my cue arm is at a 90 degree angle to my cue. And this means when I deliver the cue, I have the most even and balanced amount of space for a backswing and a follow through. And this can help me keep the cue level and make it easier to be slightly more accurate. Ideally you want your cue arm to be more or less in a straight line with your cue and not at an angle like here or here. This will almost always cause the curve action through the cue ball, which usually results in unwanted side spin that is in fact very difficult to get rid of. Something else I've noticed a lot of players can struggle with is holding the cue too tight so that the cue seems to seesaw in this sort of a motion. And to avoid the cue doing this, you can end up with unwanted movement in your arm and body. The solution is to of course use your wrist and all of your fingers. But should you worry if you're doing any of these things wrong? Well, not necessarily. A lot of good and even professional players have techniques that are far from orthodox, but work for them. So rather than changing anything, what you really need to do is find out how well your technique works so you can adapt it from there. And looking back, I seem to have had a lot of comments from people like Hansi Khan from Peshawar, Pakistan, with the same sort of problem where they're aiming and cueing fine but struggling to put the two together. So how can you test that you're cueing straight? Well, you can start by playing simple shots across the middle of the table, like this. The only way you can consistently run through and off like this is if you're queuing straight. Maybe you can do it once or twice queuing across the ball, but you won't be able to do it consistently. And this should give you a good idea what, if anything, needs changing and how well anything you find you've had to change in the future actually works. Practicing this a fair amount should also make sure that you're aiming and cueing the ball in exactly the same direction. And once you can play it consistently across the table, try and make your alignment even more accurate by playing it a long way into the corner. We are being joined on this channel by Luke Bedford from Nottingham, England. The final thing people usually talk about when discussing how well they're queuing is how much spin they're creating on the cue ball. This is usually backspin but can relate to any form of spin. You can increase the amount of spin on the cue ball you get like this by improving your pre-shot routine and the way you follow through the cue ball. Greater amounts of spin are usually caused by a prolonged contact time with the tip. Notice how I played the top shot harder and the bottom shot softer. So how did I create more spin? Well you should notice on the lower shot that my cue goes through the ball a lot further and this allows me to increase the contact time between the tip and the cue ball and get a fairly significant amount of extra backspin on the shot. But remember I said your pre-shot routine can also affect the amount of spin you can generate. The main thing you want from a pre-shot routine is something that's easy to do consistently and that allows you to feel settled on the shot, then ready to strike the cue ball. A lot of players feel that adding pauses to this in the correct places means they're unable to snatch at the shot 
and the timing is generally better. So if you want to improve yours, do this. Get a collection of balls together and the white. Then line yourself up a nearly straight shot on the black spot. It's just off straight. Then simply pot the red and screw back to the cushion. Once you've done this, all you need to do is set up the same shot again, but this time try to play exactly the same shot again with slightly less pace than the previous one. After every successful shot from then on, you begin to play it softer and softer until you're playing it literally as soft as you can to reach the cushion. This is a great exercise to practice because ultimately you'll have no choice but to deliver the cue better with more spin on it because you're unable to bring the cue ball back in any other way which will ultimately reduce the amount of power you have to play any screw shot with in a game. And this, just like everything else, will improve your cue action massively going forwards. And if you want to improve your cue action even more, then try our video Cue Action Basic Routine for Snooker. And if you want to find out more about how to aim in snooker, then try our video Snooker How to Aim Basic. And remember, don't just watch play and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel and visit the website. See you later.